All right, we're they're just going at it now. All right, we'll we'll concede. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to part three of the Olivia Crimson Bride Challenge Week. I just want to reiterate in part one, Spinner Raptor put together a very nice start and got two out of three wins, uh, which was actually the best we've had for a little while now because week one we didn't do so well. But uh, we also had Angel Corrupted Hope who did manage a win with their deck as well. We've had two very different decks. We're going to have another very different deck today and I am very excited about it. Uro uh, is our, our deck builder for today, Uro Band by All, and wow, what an interesting one. So we're going Olivia Mill, guys. Uh, as you can tell, most of the deck is actually blue, so kind of odd there, but uh, it works out great. So the idea is very simple, as Uro had to explain multiple times in the, uh, in the Discord chat. Uh, the idea is to mill some of your big threats. Uh, get Olivia Crimson Bride down and then replay some of the big stuff like Garuda, Fleet Swallower, Ulamog. So in the early turns of the game, what we'll be doing is Wall of Lost Thoughts, uh, milling ourselves as best we can, uh, and then hopefully getting in uh, some of these guys that we can later play with Olivia. So pretty straightforward. We do have Infernal Grasp as a little bit of removal. Uh, as well as in the festivities, which I think against some of the really early ground stuff makes a lot of sense. Uh, but I'm curious to see, actually see how that card goes because I haven't actually played with it. So uh, we do have a lot of clone effects uh, as well, uh, which is something really, really important to this deck because we can copy any of these. And yes, I know they're legendary, but the idea is we basically get the ability uh, multiple times. So it should be kind of interesting. I'm very curious to see how this goes. So let's go ahead, let's give it a shot, Uro. I wish you the best of luck. If you get two wins, you tie with Spinaraptor. If you get three wins, you win the whole week. So let's see what we can do, guys. Let's have some fun. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And yeah, I mean, I think this is an okay start. We've got the Consider, we've got the Infernal Grasp to help us get through the first couple turns here. I'm actually gonna lead with the Fabled Passage. What this does is just in ensure that we can Infernal Grasp turn two if we need to. Uh, and depending on what they play, we very well might need to. So I wanna make sure that we've got that opportunity. Let's go ahead and fetch out a uh, Black Source here. Uh, the consider would be nice turn one, but we don't necessarily have to do it. And here we can actually just wait and see what happens. So, uh, in response to a non-creature spell, maybe we zap this. We'll, we'll see. Um, okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this now then. Uh, and they might, I, I mean, they've got a couple mana open. They could try and do something here, but I'm very curious as to what they're just going to play with fire. It looks like. That makes sense. Uh, also, I did kind of forget to mention what the challenge week was. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, uh, we ask you guys to build around a particular card. This week is Olivia Crimson Bride, and this is the last day of this. Uh, but next week we've got Hollowed Haunting, which is kind of fun. So the idea is that you guys have to put together a list uh, that features that card. Uh, and if you do that, you can submit it to us, enter it to win, and we'll uh, we'll pick three of the submissions. The idea is that three of those submissions will be pitted against pit pitted against each other, <laughs> uh, and hopefully one will come out on top as the winner. Um, I'm gonna put that in the graveyard. I think we got an end of the festivities. Interesting. You know, I don't know that we can fetch out mountains with this list. We'll see. All right, Pillar of Flame, sure. Uh, looks like the the plan here is just burn us out as quickly as they can, which is unfortunately gonna work, I think, because we just don't have that much to, I mean, we can't really interact with burn very well, although that was nice. Uh, they kind of lost it there. Um, I suppose we'll just do this and just pass. We kind of need one more land to get Olivia down, so I'm kind of okay not fetching right away. Oh, interesting. Um, I mean, we could end the festivities just to try and force the kill here. Uh, yeah, we don't have a red source. That's funny. Um, let's see if this actually works. Wow, it does. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, we had exactly the card we needed. That's hilarious. Um, well, now we just kind of hope to get a land so we can get Olivia down. There's just, that's very good. Um, okay, let's do this. Let's mill ourselves here. Uh, worth noting that is how you want to play this so we can get some stuff into the graveyard. I'm gonna go ahead and do this because we don't have a whole lot in our graveyard at the moment to uh, really get through all this. There's the Ulamog. Okay, that's the big one. That's what we need. We need a land really badly right now. So you get to play from the top of their deck. Uh, that play with fire with Experimental Frenzy. Very good little combo. Uh, that's also quite scary. There's another play with fire. They get to Surveil. This is a very cool deck with Experimental Frenzy. A card I honestly kind of forgot about. Um, that's very good. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's attack. Let's get this. Uh, it is when you cast this spell. Um, but, I mean, this is pretty good. So this doesn't trigger because we didn't cast it. That's something we should think about here because that seems... That's a lot less on the mill plan than we uh, initially thought. So Uro, interesting idea, but I don't think it's going to work here. We're just going to die, actually, to this, uh, unfortunately. They may just have a burn spell anyway, but... Good game. They got us here. Uh, I was actually... I forgot completely that the that had to be cast to do it, so that's kind of interesting. But it is what it is. We're going to try it. Uro, just something to think about in the near future. But let's go ahead. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and I mean, this is OK. Um, I think we keep it for sure. Interesting hand, no doubt about that. Um, I guess we'll lead on this. I don't really know that it matters too much. We don't have a lot that we can do right off the bat, but we do have consider, which is helpful. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and crack this. I don't really think it's going to matter that much, but let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, we'll get a... Well, I guess it should have been a blue source, but that's fine. Let's just do this, too. We're really not... Uh, decline. We want that. We need lands, so I'm cool with that. We can get a second blue source, which we will need as well. So uh, that was actually... Technically, this was incorrect, but I don't think it really matters. Um, okay. Go ahead and crack this, and let's get that blue source. Cool. Uh, we've got Infernal Grasp up, which is worthwhile, uh, and we'll see what they end up doing. Uh, this being stranded in our hand is a little interesting, but... So this is, I'm assuming, like, Naya Landfall, if they've got Roiling Regrowth, that just kind of seems like the play. Uh, or, excuse me, Abzan, maybe? All right, let's uh, Wall of Lost Thoughts. Let's mill ourselves a few cards here. Let's see what we hit. Okay, Garuda is quite good. Um, I'm also going to play this for the land. We kind of do need to push the, the land count here. We do need to get to Olivia at some point, so I feel like it's okay to, to go that route. Migration path? Sure. So chances are, I mean, they are setting up heavily here. Uh, and given that we are a slower deck, uh, this is going to be a bit of a rough one, I'm assuming. Uh, hmm. I'm going to do this. And we're going to mill ourselves a little here. It's another Garuda. Okay. Let's see what happens. Um, we're kind of risking some stuff here. There's the Vorinclex, sure. We can kill that, which is helpful. Um, granted, they might have some kind of protection spell, though I kind of doubt it. Um, but they might. You never know. They could have a snakeskin veil or something like that. It looks like instead they're going to just foretell a card. Uh, is this the copy? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, that does save us a little bit of damage, surprisingly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill this now. Uh, well, there isn't really a, a way that they can respond and I think we just play this and pass. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push the spark double on the wall of lost thoughts. We're gonna save that. Uh, I think that's the better play uh, If we get a land one two three four five six we can play fleet swallower um, 
sure. I mean, not much we can do there. Um, yep, that's about right. Uh, let's do this. Okay. Um, I think we just pass. This is gonna be really scary because they can just start blowing up our walls here. We really need Olivia. Like, Olivia would be killer. Uh, that would have been such a good play against um, this Garrick here because we could have obviously just blocked and, or, or excuse me, attacked in and gotten something back and all that stuff. All right. Sure. So now, <laughs> Now Garrick is immediately able to ultimate. That's so good. I wish this was a creature or player we or a planeswalker we don't control, because that would be sick. Um ugh, Uro, it's not looking so good. Uh <laughs> I mean. There's a fleet swallower. <laughs> Gotta play it. Um I don't think, though, that this is going to work into our favor here. Uh, yep, there it is. Kind of expected something like that to happen. That's fine. There's the Vorinclex. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Uh, look at the power that they just put on the field. That is insane. That's very, very solid. Wow, okay. Um... I guess we can do this, but it's not really helpful at the moment. Yay! We got rid of one, yeah! <laughs> oh man, it is what it is. I do like that we can steal their creatures with this, but yeah, we're, we're super dead. So Uro, unfortunately that does take you out of the running to tie, but I still think we can have a fun time with this. Let's see if we can do one more game. Hopefully we can get at least a win uh, and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, this is our last game. Uro, I do just want to say this has been a, a really fun deck at the very least, so I do appreciate that. Let's go ahead and run this Steam Vents out here. Uh, this is a very heavy wall uh, hand, but I kind of like that. Let's do this. Let's throw the, uh, the first wall out there. Let's mill a few cards. Let's see what we get. There's an Olivia. I think at some point, maybe um, last game, what we should have started doing is milling the opponent. Um, with the Wall of Lost Thoughts, once we have targets for Olivia, I feel like that might be the play. Uh, and so maybe I was incorrect in the way that I did that, but, uh, regardless, I still think this is a fun one. I, I like the idea behind this arrow. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, so I do hope that we can make something happen here. Ooh, see, that's really cool, because now we just get to steal their stuff. I do, again, I love that. I think that's very clever. Um... It's a spirit. Okay, at the beginning of her upkeep, it's a copy of Intake. Oh. Interesting. Oh, that's very fun. Okay. Um, let's do this. Uh, we'll pull the blue source. We do need a second blue. I guess we'll just go ahead and just chart a course a couple times here. I'll throw this back and... I'm gonna throw one of these. Oops. Yes, okay, there we go. Uh, let's start a course again. <clears throat> wow, no lands. Uh, I think we'll throw an Infernal Grass back because we've got two of them in hand at this point. Um, that's unfortunate. We didn't draw any lands. Uh, we do need to hit lands and or, well, and Olivia, truthfully. Um, but a land would allow us to Mirror Hall Mimic on something that they do, uh, which could be really fun. They also have a giant deck. Look at this. And yes, I know the joke there. I hate that I said that. Um, anyway. Uh, curious to see what the opponent does here. Uh, let's see. They're gonna baffling end a wall of lost thoughts. I mean, sure. That doesn't seem that great, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, okay, well, there's Olivia. Um, let's draw a couple cards. Let's discard you. 
I'm going to go ahead and Infernal Grasp the Sithis. That's not really a creature I particularly need to steal, um, so I'm okay with just going ahead and doing that. And we'll get the land down with the Glass Pool uh, Shore here. Just so we, again, if we draw a land, we're actually in really good shape because we can just drop Olivia and go in for the attack. We've got Ulamog in there. Uh, I think that's probably just the best target, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, eventually we can Mirror Hall Mimic on the Wall of Lost Thoughts or just something uh, and start kind of pushing. Um, this only copies creatures. Okay, I just want to make sure because obviously Spark Double can copy Planeswalkers, but it's only our Planeswalkers, naturally. Uh, so that's okay though. Give me a land. Yes. Okay, that's pretty relevant. So let's do this. Let's do this. And let's do this. Uh, can I select them? Okay, I can. I just want to get this to a man manageable uh, number. So n minusing three on this puts it so it can't just exile one of our creatures, which is good. Now this can exile the Olivia, worth noting, and that would get rid of the Ulamog as well. But let's see if they think about that because they might just go for the Ulamog out of like, oh yeah, get rid of the big daddy. Uh, but they can actually two for one here if they want. Um, and we knew that they had that for the for the record, so it is what it is. Um, but we needed to get an attack in here. Yep, they did the right thing. Totally fine. And that does exile Ulamog, worth noting, so we can't bring that Ulamog back. But if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we've got another one in the graveyard. All right. Cool, cool. Ooh, Sterling Grove. That's very good. Um, yeah. This gives all of the enchantments they have Shroud. Uh, which just means nobody can target them, uh, which is pretty awesome, truthfully. Like, that's a really sick, uh, sick way to do it. Um, do we exile them four at a time? Do we try it? I think we try it. <laughs> We've got another one, so if they happen to play a creature, we can still copy it or just Infernal Grasp it later if we need to, but... This is going to be kind of funny. So they actually, if they want, they can minus three the Calyx to, to just kill this. We're kind of baiting them into it a little bit. We kind of are like, hey, do it. But we're only going to be exiling four cards at a time, so it's not really that big of a deal. OK, so now they've got Sterling Grove and Sterling Grove, which means both of these are giving each other Shroud, which means we can't target them to deal with any of the enchantments. All right, there's the circle. So that is going to get rid of this. That's fine. I'm curious as to their win, though, because they don't seem to be doing that much, if that makes sense. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't I don't know. I'm going to mill them. We're going to start getting stuff out of their deck here. Uh, and yes, I am going to spark double because we got to start getting some of these cards out of here. Uh, the ruined halo. OK. We also got, look, it's Hollowed Haunting. It's next week's card. Everybody, build around it. Um, this is interesting. Uh, return all enchantments card from enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. They're trying to get to that. Uh, they need two more loyalty counters, so three more turns. Uh, they should be able to get there. They should definitely be able to get there. Okay. And they are just, this enchantment deck is bonkers good. Like, it just has so much interaction. Yeah, dude, this is a deck I would love to try. Um, oh, we can't target. Duh, it has Shroud. I was like, why can't I do that? We can't target it. So we cannot target this with the Mimic or anything. Ah, we're probably pretty dead here. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. It is what it is. Again, I really like the idea of this deck. Uh, Uro, I think this is pretty silly. We're just not... We're... Yeah, there we go. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, unfortunately. But we are gonna let them do their thing, because... Excuse me, this is just a cool deck. Like, if you haven't seen this deck work before, it's very sick. 
They get to bring all their enchantments back, which I believe whenever you cast an enchantment, so maybe not on that, but the idea is that they're going to get a lot of uh, added benefit here. <laughs> sure. Oh, whoops. Whoop. That's fine. Uh, we'll just play it for the land. I guess we can target this with this, but that's it. That's kind of a fun little interaction. We could copy the token and then every turn they all get stronger. But again, the problem is they've got so much removal in their, their deck here that it really doesn't matter. Um, we'll kill one of these just for the sake of killing something. Again, it really isn't going to matter, but that's fine. I would love to play this enchantment list. I haven't played it in a long time, and clearly it's gotten some upgrades. Oh, so mean! Anointed Procession on the tokens. That is so sick. Uh, yeah, I love that. I'm a sucker for Anointed Procession, in case you didn't know. Uh, I love Anointed Procession. I think it's such a fun card. Yeah, you got me. You got me. Mm. Look at this. Look at this. Extra tokens. They get extra cards. Like everything they play is so overvalued right now. Oh, I want them to get the Calyx play though. Like really badly. Uh, Cause I think that's so cool. We're gonna copy one of these guys. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not helpful at all. Uh, please, Calyx. Please do it. Please do it. Come on. Ultimate the Calyx. Please. Don't just attack in. Don't be lame. Yes. All right. <laughs> Holy crap. Come on. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. <clears throat> yep. Worth noting, uh, just as a tip for next week, Hollowed Haunting, not legendary. You can play multiples of these. Look at this deck. Somebody build this deck. Just let me play this. They got another one? <laughs> yeah, dude. And they generate so much mana off of this. <laughs> oh, they didn't activate the Calyx, though. They, uh, they did not minus seven. All right, we're they're just going at it now. All right, we'll we'll concede. Let's talk about this list, Uro. All right, so obviously, Uro, we did not get any wins, but I give you points for creativity. That was a fun one. Uh, the idea was very straightforward, but it worked. I mean, the idea was there. You know what I mean? Um, I think something to to keep in mind uh, with Ulamog in the future, it is a cast trigger uh, to exile stuff, and then on attacks, it comes in attacking, not when you attack. So you don't actually even get the the exile uh, top whatever 20 cards or anything so just some things to keep in mind but regardless it was a fun list unfortunately it didn't get the win but that is okay Uro, thank you so much for participating spinner after you're our winner man i am so stoked to have you back building decks for us thank you so much for doing so thank you to everybody who submitted a deck this week do make sure you are building around hollowed haunting next week let's see what we get we can do guys i think we can have some fun somebody build this deck we just played against because i want to play that uh but Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I love you all. I'll see you again very soon.